Unfortunately, as you look at some of these incidents that have occurred across our nation, around the world, where people are, are hurting other people, we've had these mass shootings, uh, active shooter situations, large-scale incidents of violence. From a fire and law enforcement standpoint, we can't wait for this incident to happen and just hope that we rise to the occasion. We want to be prepared for this. We want to do everything that we can as a police agency and as a fire agency to be prepared for the interface required to operate at a high level. Historically, fire and EMS crews would stage and wait for law enforcement agencies to secure a scene. Uh, we're finding that that just isn't adequate any longer. That takes too much time. So we've been working really for the last year to come up with response procedures. And we're now getting to the point where we, we're having these training opportunities with boots on the ground. The, the crews that are going to be working together, we're now having opportunities to train in real time, in real locations, to get a sense of what the interface looks like. What we're trying to avoid is people being inside and not getting definitive care. And that's why police are trying to clear buildings, while police are trying to secure the scene. Um, fires oftentimes staging, waiting for that word, that, hey, it's secure. And some of the terminology sometimes I think gets lost in the translation. And so um, really having that uh, open dialogue, uh, working, working those details out before the incident occurs, I think is, is crucial. And I think that's where we're going to find success between our agencies or, or you know, with, with the agencies working together. Training together is key. Uh, it, it opens those lines of communications. It um, establishes expectations from both sides, from police and fire side. Uh, we know what fire's expectations are. They know what our expectations are. And I think with that, it kind of smooths that transition out. Again, we have you know timelines of, of you know how fast people can you know die if they're not don't have adequate breathing or you know, they're bleeding or some of those kind of things that we got to get, get hands on them. And, and you know, for, from police perspective, who, who, better, who, who better have uh, access to those patients than our, our friends at the fire side and EMS side? You know, they've got the, the training, the gear and all that kind of stuff. So we want to get them in. And again, that, that interface is, is critical to that, you know, really being able to, um, you know, have those, those protocols in place so we can make that happen. If you look at the statistics, that's, that's what it's all about. It's not about how quickly the police shoot the uh, assailant. It's not about how quickly we transport people to the hospital. It's about how quickly can police and fire crews together access people that are injured and provide life-saving intervention. I think both police and fire find it unacceptable that people inside um, don't have definitive care for you know, one reason or another um, and you know it's, it's finding a way to to shrink that time and is, is again we know from the fire side and EMS side that as quickly as we can get to those folks the better better chance they are to survive their injuries one of the things that we offer through Bellingham PD is we go around and we actually teach our active shooter response and part of that training involves something called run hide fight uh, run, hide, fight is something that's used as best practice throughout the nation. And what that is, is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's something where if there is a threat, especially with an active shooter scenario, is that you're looking for the very first part of that is to actually run from that portion of it. The second part of it is that you're going to try to hide. And the third part of it is that you're going to fight if you have to. Um, so that's really the basic sections of it, is that you're just getting in there and you're trying to actually uh, go out there and show the community there is a certain way that you can respond to this that'll help save lives and maybe even help save your life. And a very important part of that is just being aware of your surroundings. Uh, be aware of what's happening around you, be aware of what's happening uh, to your neighbors, be aware of what's happening at your school. Understand what's going on, understand what their plan of action, if something does happen. And then when you're also at your schools, you're at your business, don't take things for granted. If you have a person who is acting suspicious, or if you see something that's suspicious, then call 911. You know, the best eyes and ears that law enforcement has is the people out there in the community. It's the people that are on the street, it's the neighbors, it's the people that are working at the businesses, it's the people that are at the schools.